And we're joined now by the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes and winner of the last three Big Ten titles, Jim Trestle. Thanks so much for being with us. Great to be here, Jesse. Well, you know, you're seen as a real stoic, charismatic leader pacing the sidelines. Malcolm Jenkins has said you're the biggest jokester on the team, but I've heard you do a really good Inspector Clouseau impersonation from Pink Panther. Any chance of getting ahead of that? Well, you know, Malcolm uh, lets out a lot of my uh, dirty laundry, if you will. My wife loves it when I ask her. I say, does your dog bite? <laughs> but really, I am stoic and I am serious and... Uh, but it's a lot of fun to be here with you. Well, it's great with you as well. We'll get back to on the field stuff. So many expectations coming up this year for your football team. Now, you've played in the last two national championship games. You've won the last three Big Ten titles. How does your team deal with these sort of expectations heading into 2008? Well, getting better is all about keeping the distractions away from you and focusing in on the task at hand. And that's difficult sometimes. You and I talked earlier today about the fact that you've got guys coming back for their fourth and their fifth year. How do you keep it fresh? How do you make it exciting and exhilarating for them and and that will be our challenge you know what we're thinking you know how we're looking at things because we're very capable talent wise sure and you guys return 20 starters to this year's football squad how important is that for your team in terms of the seniority and leadership heading into this year well they'll need to be great leaders and guys that are this far along and everyone's talking to about where are they going to be drafted and what all the honors will be that might come their way have to be special in terms of their focus and and their their stick to as to what they're needed for, and they are needed to be leaders. They are needed to teach those young guys. We've got some pretty good young guys coming in, too, and they need the leadership of those older guys. And talking about one of the guys who's coming back is James Laurinaitis, and there was a guy who a lot of people thought for sure was going to leave for the NFL last year, but he surprised a lot of people in the fact that he came back for his senior season. Did that surprise you at all? It surprised me a little, but not totally, because I knew how much James valued his experience at Ohio State. He's got great friends. Uh, he enjoys the whole campus scene. Uh, academics are very important to him. One of his role models is A.J. Hawk, and I know A.J. didn't even consider going out early because he knew he would only have X amount of time at Ohio State. So it surprised me a little because, you know, those first-round numbers they throw around are, are extraordinary, but James really values his time at Ohio State. You know, Beanie Wells really had a remarkable season last year. He rushed for over 1,600 yards, 15 touchdowns. He did a lot of that with a bad ankle and a broken hand. Can you talk a little bit about the growth that you've seen in terms of his maturation over the course of his career? Well, one thing, Jesse, that people don't realize is Beanie today is 19 years old. Yeah. You know, you look at him and you think he looks like an NFL guy and, and he's ex trained extremely hard. And I thought he did a good job of toughing it out because, as you say, his ankle was a little banged. He had the broken bone in his wrist. Uh, he works extremely hard in the weight room. Uh, football is very important to him. His team is very important to him. And uh, I'm anxious for him to have a great year. Now, you guys have signed everybody's number one high school prospect in Terrell Pryor. There's a lot of fans out there that are curious to, to know what are they going to see from this guy. What can, what can fans expect to see from a guy like Terrell Pryor this year? As we talked earlier today, probably in the top two quarterbacks, yourself and Terrell, of course. in the last 15 years coming out of, uh, <laughs> of this part of the world. But Terrell Pryor is a tremendous worker. He loves the game. He wants to know every little detail. He wants to do whatever the team needs him to do. Uh, he's crafted a great relationship with Todd Beckman and Joe Bowserman, and the other two guys that he'll be battling for playing time. Uh, I'm anxious to get him on the field and to get him with our guys, to get him playing at the speed that our game is played at. Now, he might even raise that speed just a little bit, but I can't wait to get out there and tinker around with how he can help us. You've just come out with a new book, a winner's manual for the game of life. What, what prompted you to, to write this book? I think for years and years I've leaned on reading other people's books and, and getting information and help from other people. And I've had the good fortune growing up in a coaching family, working for four great head coaches, working alongside a lot of assistant coaches. Uh, and then you come to the point in time where you think, you know, maybe you can add value from your experiences and your blessings to others. And so we've used a tool called the Winner's Manual with our team for the last 23 years. Uh, it's about more than football. It's about their lives and their academics and their families and, of course, their football and their training. Uh, but it, it's a plan. And it's kind of what we did when we went to Youngstown State. We put a plan together and followed suit that first year. We battled them at 2-9, and nine and but we kept true to our plan and came to Ohio State. We were 7-5, and five and that wasn't the way you'd want to start, but we had a plan. The Winner's Manual is about a plan. If there's something that a young reader could take away from this book, what do you hope that is? 
Well, one of the big things that we talk about in the book is we have to make sure there's a clear-cut understanding between the difference of what you do and who you are. You know, what we do, we happen to do football. Now you happen to do broadcasting. And, and, but who you are is deeper than that, more important than that. Uh, it goes clear to your soul. And, uh, you know, we want people that are gung-ho about sports and gung-ho about football and maybe gung-ho about business to make sure they have a clear delineation that their goals and their purpose are two different things. Absolutely. So a lot of fans email into the show here at College Football Live, and they're wondering why or if the Ohio State defense is a problem with the spread offense. We hear so much about that now today. Obviously, Michigan now with Rich Rodriguez will run that form of offense. How do you prepare your defense differently this year to face what you're going to see across the line of scrimmage in the Big Ten? Well, in our 12 games, as we look at it, it looks like six of them will be of a spread variety, and six of them will be a little bit more of what used to be traditional. I think spread is starting to evolve a little bit as being the traditional offense. Uh, you better get a lot of speed on the field. Uh, you better make sure that you can run down things and, and cover in space, and, and, uh, and you better hit those guys with the ball in their hands. You know, the one thing that I think, like any offense, I don't care if it's the Patriots offense in the Super Bowl or this offense in college football, whatever. If you hit that guy that's got his hands on the ball a lot, you can disrupt some things. And so we better make sure we do that. The Big Ten last year went 3-5 and five in bowl games. Ohio State obviously has lost the last two national championship games. What do you say to critics out there who say that the Big Ten is a weak conference? Well, I think anyone that's ever played against the Big Ten uh, – would refute that. The Big Ten is not a weak conference. It's a strong conference. Did we lose the last two national championship games? Yes. Uh, did we lose the last two Rose Bowls, which is a BCS venue? Yes. And, and that gets the most notoriety. So I think you have to look in the mirror and say, if you want respect, you have to win those games. And, and so I don't know if you ever get respect in debates. You get respect in action. And 2008 is on the way. There's such a big game coming up September 13th at USC. National title implications written all over that game. But for Ohio State, for yourself, heading into that game, almost as if you're the, the flag bearer for the Big Ten right now. You've won the last three Big Ten titles. Is there any added pressure on you as Ohio State playing in that game to make a statement not only for yourself, but for the conference, for the Big Ten conference as well? You know, I think we do take that responsibility to represent the Big Ten. That's why when you're watching the bowl games, you're cheering like crazy with Penn State over Tennessee or whatever it happens to be. Uh, you know, we do take that uh, very serious going into sep September 13th that, hey, we're not only representing Ohio State and uh, everyone in the world's going to watch the game, but we're also representing all of our Big Ten brothers and brethren. And, and uh, you know, that's a great responsibility that we look forward to. Well, guys, with a win September 13th at USC, it would not be a big surprise at all to see this guy right here leading his team into their third straight national title game.